Hello, hello, hello. I cannot believe it's June 1st, 2020. It seems like just yesterday it was May, and the day before that, it was like last June. Time is flying. I am so blessed to be here again with Roger Bain, one of the most insightful insurance people I've ever met. It's always a privilege to be in the room with him, virtually or otherwise. And today we're going to be talking about, I got him laughing, that's a good sign. We're going to be talking about controlling cost and, and how we go about that, which is probably the most important issue facing the industry right now. I think you're going to love what he's going to share. I saw a pre preview of it a little earlier. It's awesome stuff. This is definitely grab your pen and paper time. Really focus in. I encourage you to really pay attention to this because this is what your clients really need to know. And this is how they're going to be able to be more successful. And their success is your success. So, Roger, let's talk about the biggest thing you know is facing customers right now. Well, Bob, there's, there's two major things that face customers today. And unfortunately, the first is fear, right? This whole COVID thing and some of the projections from the actuaries and the industry and the recoil of what the insurance companies might do is making people think about uh, homeowners insurance after a hurricane and, and what might happen in that respect. So there's certainly a lot of concerns going on and fear, but frankly, that fear as always is born in cost. What is this going to cost me a year from now, six months from now? when my plan renews, are they gonna hammer us to try and make up for what they're getting crushed on in this whole epidemic? Well, and, and that's what I hear all the time with people now. Boy, this is really getting expensive for the insurance companies. And you know rates are gonna go up dramatically next year. Probably someone told me for the next 10 years. And employers ha are worried about these situations, especially right now when they're worried about just being operational and every single dollar matters now more than ever before. So Roger, help us understand what you're trying to put together here, what you're doing. Well, Bob, you know, it, the prediction that costs are gonna continue to go up every year for 10 years is just an easy, empty prediction to make in the healthcare world today, right? I mean, we, we've all seen that. But we all have to challenge that as well. You really, really need to challenge that quote unquote conventional wisdom with the whys. Why do healthcare costs continue to skyrocket? Why can't we get them under control? Where is all the money going? And what are these charges? And, and all of these things truly need to be addressed in order to get rates under control. And right now, I've spoken to many brokers and many large shops as well as the smaller shops, and sales right now are stagnant. Everybody's afraid to talk about where they are or their employers are too concerned or too busy with other things. But the reality is you've got to take some of this quiet time and start that spike of sales back up. You've got to get rolling again with communication to the employers. You don't have to sell them anything. You need to communicate to them. You need to talk to them about the tools, the means by which we have to help them control their costs so that this thing doesn't recoil and come bite them all in the tail and, and drive their costs up another 25% next year and they're already second highest overhead element. And right now, it might be the highest overhead element because payrolls on furloughs. <laughs> so, but right. they're still maintaining benefits. So it's, it's a crazy scenario right now, upside down like we've never seen before. So those are the kinds of things we really need to look at. If we're going to take the flat out of the revenue curve for an insurance broker and even help their customers in that same way, we've got to take a look at exactly what's going on right? If you want to curve your sales upward by getting your, con your consumers, your customers cost under control, you've got to look at where we are. Status quo doesn't do anything, right? And we've got to get those controlling costs underway. So let's talk about a transparent PBM. 
well, why a transparent PBM? What do we need to know about a transparent PBM for? Well, because prescription drug costs are one of our highest escalating roles. You see this new prescription that, that's uh, looking at treating the COVID virus at $1,000 a dose. We're looking at the old one that's a couple of dollars a dose. Nobody knows which one's working or not working right now but there's money to be made. So these things are being generated. We look at all of that kind of thing. A transparent PBM is gonna make sure we're getting the appropriate cost for those prescriptions by passing through the actual cost of that drug without marking it up for an extra rate. Not only that, but we're gonna do the clinical management and make sure we get it at the right cost. So first, let's make sure we're passing through the appropriate cost. Then let's find out if there's an alternate for that or even an alternate way to get it. Maybe there's a manufacturer's assistance program. Maybe there's international mail order. Maybe there's some other way. Maybe there's even RX tourism to go get the prescription another way. There's a lot of different things we need to look at, but controlling those costs for your customers is still about that element of it. And then what about controlling the clinical management of prescription drugs. Not every physician is issuing the right prescription every time. And the pharmacists know this. And your PBM, your pharmaceutical benefit manager, knows this, but not all PBMs are specifically designed or paid to do clinical management and to truly look at the prescription drugs and make sure they're appropriate treatment for the care of being provided. So let's take a look at that clinical management and do that. And if we're gonna start looking at clinical management of prescription drugs, well, now let's expand our pre-certification list to get the right type of things involved in care. Healthcare is more and more expensive, more and more broad, more and more sophisticated, but it's still old school. There are still physicians saying, let's try this. And not every physician has an evidence-based care model built into their platform so that they can go in and look at symptoms and say, this is the historical fact of what treats this condition, these symptoms, the best way, the most effective way with the best outcomes for the best money. They don't all have those databases at their fingertips and they don't all use them. So let's work to expand the pre-cert and build in evidence-based care with a concierge, a medical concierge that can help drive employees to the appropriate practitioner and the appropriate appropriate treatment regimen so they get the best care at the best time at the best place for the best price. It just doesn't make sense to keep throwing darts at a dartboard and try and get care in any one of experimental ways, meaning not that the treatment is experimental, but let's try this and let's try that and let's try this. Well, let's first take the evidence, the data that we've been collecting for years, the millions of pieces and millions of pieces of data that we've collected that show that this gets the best results, and let's apply that knowledge and get it moving. Roger, can I jump in and ask a question there? Sure, go ahead. Oftentimes when people hear evidence-based uh, care and that they're going to be guided, that tends to make them fearful that they're going to be told what to do. Do you see that coming up a lot or do you see that the benefits that people are told of doing things a certain way far outweigh that? Well, there's, there's two ways to look at this. There is, there is an old dogma from the HMOs where the employee population thought that this HMO was gonna tell them what to do. And the HMO is gonna drive them to this doctor, this facility, and they're never gonna get a referral to go see the best of the best because the HMO won't do that. They wanna control it and keep it in their doctors. Well, if that principle has any validity, let's take it a different direction. Let's talk about evidence care that's driving you to the best doctors instead of to a bunch of primary doctors or, or a bunch of doctors that are specific to an HMO or specific to a contract. And let's talk about the providers that are best at what you need on any given day. So evidence-based care can talk about treatment regimen and providers at the same time. We need to get you in the right care. What I've experienced is that the vast majority this is a tough pitch sometimes at a C-suite, 
But the vast majority of employees, if you get out of the C-suite, they want guidance, Bob. They have no idea what to do when a physician says, you need to have this looked at for your heart, or you need this looked at for your gallstones, or we have this concerns and we wanna send you for this test and this exam. That patient is riddled with fear and confusion and follows blindly, but fearfully, because they don't get all the support they need from their medical provider. So having a concierge behind the scenes, pick up the phone, call the nurse, let them confer with the medical director. You have nurses and clinicians and physicians behind the scenes working with you every step of the way to help you navigate not only the best care, <clears throat> but the best way to use your benefit plan to get that best care and to keep your out-of-pocket costs <clears throat> at a minimum while getting the best care with the best outcomes with the best doctors. We, we need this. I mean, Americans need this, we, so many of us. Dawn's just completed some enrollment meetings recently and the employees are embracing this methodology even though some C-suite executives think it sounds overbearing. The employees are loving it and, and they're embracing it and saying, that's what I need. I need somebody to help me understand what the heck I have to do. And everybody on this call all over the country listening to this says, you know, deep inside, so do I. I've been in the health insurance business for over 30 years now, and I wish I had a medical concierge behind the scenes every time I needed medical care to say, okay, Raj, this is what you're looking at. Here's the best way to go about it. Let's call this guy. Let me check the, the, the physician's quality score based on industry standards and quality measures that are out there that are tangible and that are real and aren't just Zelp reviews, but real stuff. And let me make sure you're in the right place. That to me is comforting. It's rewarding. And that's the way a health plan should work. But instead, it, we have PPOs that you open up and it has a big list of providers they don't even have a four-star or five-star rating system. All they have is a provider, an address, and a specialty. No measure of cost and no measure of quality. What way is that to get healthcare, Bob? Well, and I was going to say it also probably for the employers, it saves the employees time. They they aren't playing dialing for dollars with the old book of uh, you know who's in and is this doctor in my plan and and all those good things. So it's probably got some real positives there. Well, and that's a really good point. It's gonna save the employees a lot of time. It's gonna save them a lot of stress, a lot of confusion, a lot of anxiety. And right now that's critical for everybody. I mean, right now we've, we've heard the stories in, in, in the reports about anxiety going sky high in this whole time of this COVID virus. Now you add the rioting and the protests to that, and you're looking at a time when employees really need the guidance. In fact, all of us need the guidance. When we need healthcare, we need answers, we need support, we need that security blanket to help us understand exactly what's going on with our bodies and how we can help it get better. So these are critical components. And if, in fact, you pick up the phone and you call the nurse and she can put you in touch with a telemedicine provider because what your needs are really don't even warrant that you have to go in and see a physician. You pick up the telephone, you get a free office visit with the provider who calls the pharmacy and orders a generic prescription. All of a sudden, you pick up a drug for free from a physician for free, and your whole episode of care was no cost to you with the utmost in outcome. And what better is there than that but driving people to the appropriate care in the appropriate ways? And so many times we forget about that. We emphasize freedom of choice so heavily that we forget to choose the best. <laughs> That's a damn shame. And in this day and age with the telemedicine, Roger, that's really important. I've had some medical issues that I've had to go to the hospital for, and it's scary to go to the hospital for any reason right now because you don't know. And when you get there, it is a world of checking to make sure and they, they, they will isolate you. If you blink your eye the wrong way, you get isolated. So telemedicine seems to be coming really to a point where people expect it 
they appreciate it and it works really well. Right. And and so when you combine that, so let, let's, let's take a look. We're talking about transparent BM, RX alternatives, clinical management, pre-cert lists, ex concierge medicine to help you get to the evidence-based care practice and the regimen that is proven by the medical world to be the best treatment. Now we got to pull all that together. So you add a benefits app to that. And that benefit app gets at your fingertips on a mobile phone. You can boom, hit, you can call a nurse, you can call your telemedicine provider, you can do what you need to do all from your mobile phone. Your ID card is there. You've got 24 and seven customer service that understands your benefits, knows where your benefits are, can help you navigate the system. And even better than that, if you leave your app turned on like you should for a medical app, You've got geofencing. You could be on the way to a pharmacy to pick up your prescription drug, and the geofencing can tell you you're going to the most expensive pharmacy in your neighborhood. Turn left, go three blocks, and, and you're at the least expensive pharmacy in your neighborhood. So wow, th there's amazing things that we can do with these apps and these controls. In fact, if you're going to the emergency room, but there's an urgent care center closer and on the way, you very well may get the opportunity to, to be realize that and get to an urgent care center instead. So what we can do with that benefit app, geofencing, and of course, the telemedicine provider, now we're coordinating all of your episodes and elements of care when you're at need at, at the greatest need and the greatest concern and the greatest insecurity, and you've got it on your mobile phone as an application to help reach whatever you need to reach to really get the next direction. Now that's one thing, but now talk about your clinical advisors, your concierge medical firm behind the scenes, getting reports from the mobile app, reports from telemedicine providers, reports from the pharmaceutical benefit manager, and data and claims so that this medical provider can see every single day the types of things that are pulling together in your health conditions so that they can point you in the right direction to the right model of care to help get through the process in the most effective way. Comprehensive management tying all of this stuff together and even moving toward predictive modeling so we take years where the claims coming in and we can say hey this is what's coming based on what we see in your past treatment and in your history and this is what we need to attack and prevent so that we can keep you well so you add all of that together and then take the next step of getting some of these insane hospital rates under control and we do that in Maryland by stealing, steering you to the appropriate hospital. We do that in other states by using a reference-based pricing model that your medical concierge is managing to drive you to the facilities that are friendly to the process and that are willing to be most competitive and those that provide the greatest of quality. So we marry that mixture and find you the right place. These elements, Every one of these individual elements are talking points that you need to have with your customer every single day to help break this curve. You can talk to a customer about their pharmaceutical benefit manager any day you want. Any day you want. You pick up the phone, you talk to your customer and say, you know what, I'd like to talk to you about prescription drug utilization in your group. What's going on? It's expensive. Do you know how it's working? Do you have any comfort level with that? Do your employees have a mobile app that pulls together all of their different types of things that they'd like to do? What are we doing in evidence-based care? How are we doing that? Is it as simple as a patient-centered medical home that's managing primary care, but not necessarily going all the rest of the steps? What really can we do? And these are discussions that we need to have with our customers so that they even understand that these things exist. Most of our customers have no idea what a transparent PBM is because they don't know that there's so many games behind the pharmaceutical benefit management industry that they even need to have one that's transparent. They don't even know these problems exist, Bob. 
I don't Can know. I jump in, Roger? Because I forgot to say early on that if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment, we have a check box on the right of your screen. Feel free to fire at Roger all your questions. You ask, you put them in the chat box and we will ask Roger right here and now. He's thrown a lot at you. So if you have a question or a statement, or if one of these things has worked for you, we'd love to hear how it worked for you because we're all trying to learn. The other thing I want to say, Roger, I love your graphic, except it makes it look like the cost is going up. It's not that these things are driving up the cost. These are driving up the opportunity for a these broker are... to be more effective in sales, correct? That's right. This graph is trying to indicate the sales volume that you get by increasing all of the value that you deliver to your customer. Deliver more value, deliver more sales. That's the reality of it. If, if you're the broker delivering these types of innovations, you're going to win more cases. It's that simple. This is there. So are, there I, are, go, ahead. go ahead. I was, was going to say, say can are, I ask you a question? Yes. My question is, if I'm a broker and I'm talking to my customers, should I be shotgunning all these things like you just did in 20 minutes? Or is it typical that you would talk about two or four or six of them? or whichever ones they bring up as the hot button issues? I would, I would if, if I'm the broker and I'm talking to a client, I know which of these they have already engaged and which they haven't. And I'm gonna talk about one of them at a time. I'm gonna okay. look for the one that they haven't done, right? Maybe they're locked in with a fully insured carrier. Maybe that carrier has a benefit app. Maybe that carrier does a little bit of patient-centered medical home stuff to try and manage care, but they're stuck with that PBM, that pharmacy benefit manager that they, that's turnkey. It's built into the big insurance company's product, and they don't have any choice in it, and yet it's not transparent, and there could be big rebates going back to the insurance company. Every time an employee pays a higher copay, there's likely a higher rebate or a higher charge that's coming back to the insurance company that could have been shifted into the generic field and save everybody money except the insurance company, right? So, so one at a time, you know, geofencing. I mentioned geofencing in a group of people that they can actually provide feedback and, and the size, the, the, the gasp are like, this is incredible, this is awesome. If I can actually have my cell phone say, hey, there's a cheaper pharmacy down the street or there's an urgent care center here, don't run to the emergency room unless you really have to. Wow, look how much money you save an individual that's at the time of care is just going where he knows he's scared you know mom their kid, kid falls down and hurts their arm or, or bumps their head or who knows what you're just simply scared all you're doing is trying to get to the fastest emergency room you can and that is rarely not i won't say rarely but if you're talking about percentages yeah the emergency room is way overutilized so it's really not always necessary that we run to an emergency room for every one of these things I know I had my daughter when she was smaller, got a, a cut in her head. And we, we Guilty as we were, we were working on a deck and she came out to watch, a ladder fell over, hit her in the head. But the, emergency, the emergency room was the last place we wanted to go. And fortunately, we were able to find an urgent care center where the doctor was incredible and he almost was successful in suturing her, her injury by braiding her hair around it to pull the wound together. Unfortunately, her hair was a little too fine, but that's what he was thinking. He was thinking about the least invasive way to help take care of this thing and be done. And you don't find that in an emergency room. Emergency room is quite the opposite. They didn't want to do a, an MRI to make sure there was no brain damage you know, because that's how they generate massive amounts of revenue. So there are so many things that we need to do to bring the customer comfort, security, confidence, that they're in the right hands to get the right care, not just to be covered for whatever the heck they do. Because whatever the heck they do isn't always right. 30% of cancer, initial cancer diagnoses are wrong. I, don't, I can't say that enough. 30% of initial cancer diagnoses are wrong. Either there is no cancer or they diagnosed it as the wrong cancer and they're gonna treat it with aggressive chemotherapy that's very damaging to the human body and it's not even gonna attack that particular cancer because it was a bad diagnosis. So now you're talking about weakening the body while the cancer is not weakened. So you've got so many tragic 
things that can go on in this whole environment. You've got plans, you've got health plans out there every day where somebody can call a telemedicine provider with a real concern, and then the medical manager never becomes aware of that. The two aren't linked, right? There's no communication between the two. And then there are plans where the medical manager that's doing pre-certification and wellness management and trying to control the costs of the health plan doesn't even have claims data, doesn't have any track record, doesn't have any ability to do any predictive modeling to say, well, wait a minute, Mary Jo has had this symptom, this symptom, this symptom, this care, this drug, we're headed to a crisis. Let's fix it before it gets to that crisis. We're not doing that enough. And in the world of healthcare, these are the things, these are, this is a whole difference. This is the difference between health insurance and health benefits, right? Let's provide benefits to our customers. Let's get them the right kind of care at the right time so that it's a benefit and not just insurance to pay for their mistake. You know, auto insurance pays. You know, you run into a light pole, they pay for that mistake. But wouldn't it have been great if you had auto benefits that could prevent you from running into that light pole in the first place? <laughs> That's what Elon Musk is trying to do with Tesla anyway. But Right. So I mean, just just think about it. These are the things that we forget, and our sales are depend upon dependent upon our value. So if there's anything I can tell you to take the flat out of your sales, provide more value. You know how you provide value? You don't take something like this and put it on social media and hope your customers find it. You pick up your phone, you talk to your customer and you talk about one or two little bullet ideas at a time. If you're gonna to go to lunch or you're gonna fake a lunch now because you're gonna do it on a Zoom meeting or you're just gonna to call to say, hey, how are things going? I'd like to talk to you about your benefits. I know you're afraid of what all this is gonna to do to your renewal. And in some cases, insurance companies might have a big knee jerk reaction and spike your renewal, but I want you to know there are alternatives that we will look at every step of the way. And I need you to be prepared to talk to me 90 days before you renew so that we can really do some strategic planning to make sure you're gonna get the right types of health benefits in your hands and your employees' hands before that renewal comes and slams you over the head. So these are the things. Take the flat out of the curve by building the track record now. Let me throw something else at you, Roger. I've talked to a couple of brokers in the last week or so, and they told me they're still not talking to their clients because they have nothing to say. Well, they're afraid of those questions. They're afraid of those concerns. I, I've been waiting to get to ask you the question, what should they do? Do you agree with their point of view that they should just wait? Well, Bob, let me let me tell you this. You and I agreed two months ago or so to pause our benefit roasts because we weren't sure what to say. We didn't want to look like piranha trying to fish and, and prey on people during a hard time. We didn't want to do a hard sell because of that. The problem is, in hindsight, I disagree with that. What we should have been doing is delivering value and comfort every step of the way. And that's why we're here last week or two weeks ago and back today, and we'll be back again in another two weeks because we need to deliver that value, that comfort, that knowledge, those alternatives, ways to control health benefit costs past this generation of COVID and this terrible wave of what has gotten everybody frightened and where even the leading actuarials in the country say that we're gonna have radical increase in the cost per employee as a result of COVID, we need to know that there are ways around that and ways to control that. And we need to take advantage of that. And so we need to do the right things to get costs under control today and the next day and the day after. You'll notice all of these different things. We've talked about some of these for years. We've talked about some of them for days. Some of them are all brand new. We're just pulling this stuff together and every single day working to innovate a little more to help the clients get the best health care at the best time. Roger, as we look, talk about. if we look forward, so when we're looking at renewals in 2021, 2022, 
you deal with the self-funded world. You've also looked at the fully insured world. The self-funded world is going to be better able to control costs in the future as well, correct? Because of the things you've articulated here. I believe so. Uh, okay. I believe there is no question that the self-funded world is far better positioned to control costs because they're not beholden to this big network of physicians that's leveraging some arbitrary discount to capture patients for an insurance company. So the, the fact that PPOs have begun to become provider protection organizations instead of preferred provider organizations, they're now looking at the relationship between the insurance company and the physicians is more important than the relationship between the insurance company and the consumer. And that's a damn shame. And that's what we need to remember that our job is to provide quality benefits. The insurance is just to protect the cost, provide the benefit to the employees, and remember quality healthcare costs less than bad healthcare. It's proven fact, plain and simple. You know, we, we're, we built a plan recently where you, you don't get a transplant unless it's at a center of excellence. We're not going to send you down the street to Joe's Hospital that's never done a transplant before and let you do a transplant because it's cheaper. It's just stupid. And Roger, can I jump in? I'll tell you a little story about that. One time, uh, it was about 10, 15 years ago, I found a procedure that I wanted to have done on me. And the only place that was doing it was Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. I went to my doctor at Johns Hopkins, told him about the procedure. His response was, we'll do it here. I said, you've never done this before. And he said, we'll call them. We'll get them to tell us what they do, and we'll do it here. <laughs> and I had to talk the, the funder of the insurance into allowing me to go to New York. But in the end, it was, this is where they do this. So what you're describing is actually true. These hospitals will, you know, they just get the playbook, and it's like a recipe for chicken soup. Oh, I can do that. Right. And there are, there's good and bad in all of us, Bob, in every, every field, right? There are physicians that completely well-intended are going to try and deliver care that's not necessarily the element of care that they're best at, but right. they think they're helping and they intend to help. That doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. You know, it's, it's, it kind of, brings you back to my cousin Vinny, which is a very fortunate, lucky ending, right? But the reality is they let him do it, but they let him represent him in court because he was somebody's uncle, right? you know? That's not what you, that's not the way, reason you select a cardiac surgeon, no. right? <laughs> or an oncologist. You don't pick them out because they're Joe's buddy or my primary doc's golfing partner on Wednesdays. It doesn't make sense. We've got to do better than that. And the time to do better than that is upon us. It's here. The tools now exist, and we've been ignoring many of them too long. So if you're going to be the best insurance advisor that you can possibly be as a professional, you cannot ignore the tools available today. It's just, it, it would be remiss. Well, if you ignore them, someone down the street's going to go in and explain it. I don't even care about that. I don't even care about competition. I care about if you ignore the tools available today, you may not be saving the lives you're supposed to be saving. I would agree with that. It's that simple. I mean, we can talk about more sales. We can talk about more money. We can talk about a whole lot of things. Doing the right thing drives more sales. That's the end of the message today. And doing the right thing has a lot of components. You need to stay educated. You need to learn. You need to understand if there's elements in this call that we've talked about that you're not familiar with, you have to learn it. If you want to bolster your sales, if you want to take your sales to the right level, you do it by being the best at what you do. 
And to be the best at what you do, you need to learn all of these different elements and more because there's going to be another one in two weeks, right? Maybe tomorrow. There's always going to be another initiative to try and develop another way to help your customers get better care. And you have to look at the, I spend most of my days studying things like that. That's what I do now. I'm not out selling to brokers and I'm not out selling to customers. We've got our team to do that. And, and my role is examining every one of these things, all these avenues and all these opportunities. Frankly, it'll drive you insane because there is, there is thousands of them. The number of emails I delete from these providers is it pales in comparison to the junk mail or, or is, is probably higher than junk mail most people get at large. And yet the number I talk to is probably a, <laughs> a ridiculous number as well. You need to look into these things. You need to study them. You need to know them. And you need to ferret out the best of them. And of course, we're, we're here to help you do that whenever you need it. If you don't need it, then great, just go do it. I mean, bottom line is our industry needs to reframe who they are, right? Stop providing insurance and start providing benefits. And the benefit is better quality care for less. It just makes sense. Well, Roger, I'm going to throw a little plug in here for you. I know you wouldn't do it, but I've, I've seen your company really closely over the last six, seven years. You guys are uniquely wired in that you want to help people, brokers actually understand this, help the employers understand this. So if someone has a question, if they want to dip their feet in this, if they want to try it again because they haven't done it in a couple of years and they feel rusty or whatever that is, you guys are not the ones to go, how could you not know this? You're the ones to reach, to meet people wherever they are and help them get up to speed and learn the latest things from what the words mean to how the policies work, even up to selling strategies, right? Your people will go out with someone and do the discussions to get to it, even helping with enrollment, the whole soup to nuts start to finish. You're not just here's the brochure, figure it out. You guys are really hands-on, correct? Well, that, that is correct, Bob. But what, you know, early, early on in our days with Client First Brokerage Services and Jim Eric back in the early 90s, probably 1990, when the CE law was passed, we decided then to use education as the main tool to build our business. Training and education and understanding. And to, to do training and education properly, you have to know what's coming, not just what's happened. It's not just history. History is critical importance. We all know how important history is to education, but you also need to understand trends and the movement of the industry and what's coming next and how to innovate. And so that's what we try and do is create that cutting edge movement and training and we're, we're there anytime we can. Okay. Well, Roger, I see here, if someone wants to copy this presentation, you're happy to provide it to them. What if someone wants to contact you so that they can learn more, so that they can get a little education, whatever it is, how can they reach you? Well, I think Dana is probably still with us. So I will make sure that Dana uh, sends out my email address in the chat box. But either way, it's Roger Bain. There it is. She's there just put her email. Way to go, Dana. Thank you. And Dana will probably send you a form also to get your free cup of coffee. And, and we have a, a new method of that. We've got a tremendous cup of coffee from a company called Rise Up uh, in Eastern Maryland. And we'll be uh, sending you a nice coffee, enough, actually a package of coffee. You can make a whole pot of coffee with for our next chat. But uh, we'd love you to try Rise Up. They're a great little company in the Eastern Shore. They're coming out with some really great coffee blends. We'll send you a sample labeled with us and, and just say, hey, Let's keep it, keep kicking out there, guys, and everybody do everything we can to help you win. Roger, throw your phone number out there. Just say it for people sure. who might be driving or not in a place where they're seeing that. Yeah, it's 443-275-7412. That's the direct ex direct extension to my desk. I'm, I'm here a lot, so I'm, I'm at my desk more than I am anywhere else probably in life. So it's 443-275-7412. Give me a call anytime. If it's one of those times I'm not at my desk, just leave a message. I'm very good at getting back to folks. So I'm here he for you. He will pick up his phone. I can assure you. I've been in meetings with him where he'll say, hey, my phone's ringing, and away he goes. 
And he's on a call with the broker right off the bat. No, no reflection on you, Bob. <laughs> None taken. <laughs> <laughs> well, Roger, this has been great. We will be back in two weeks again, right? Yes. With another great topic on self-funding and how to better get that information and how to be a resource to your customers. I think the highlights for me today, just real quick, um, that there's a whole lot more information available about healthcare than there ever has been. And that it sounds like self-funded plans, the best ones are really trying to use that to get past the status quo. And that for agents and brokers, this is a golden opportunity to get in front of your clients with a really powerful message about containing costs at a time when every company I talk to, it's all about cost right now. How can I shave, shave, shave? Because shaving costs here probably is going to save them having to get uh, let go of employees, which no one ever wants to do. Did That's I catch the highlights? Very true, Bob. One one closing comment, though, and, and I think it's really cool because you and I, when we did this last time, was the first time that we did it when we weren't really in the same room, right? We've been doing the benefit roast together for months, and because of the virus, you're holed up at home and I'm holed up in my office and everybody's separated with this social distance thing. One of the things I can tell every broker here if you're not using video conferencing to make your calls start, the it is an exponential difference between an email and a telephone call to your customer, and it's an even greater exponential difference between a, a telephone call to a video call where they can see your face, they can see the passion in your eyes, they can see the meaning in your heart, you, 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 they can see the sincerity in what you're talking about, let your customers see you, even if it's via a computer screen. You can't get out in front of them every day today. Everybody's still nervous. Do not ignore all of the technologies available to you to get face-to-face -face with your customers, even if it's via computer. And if that's something that someone doesn't understand how to do, Roger, if it's okay with you, if they call you and say they'd like a tutorial, I am happy to help someone through that for you. Oh, yeah. Anybody here can reach out to Bob Graham for that one, and I'm sure Bob can help any of you through that kind of technology. Absolutely. From Zoom to Skype to FaceTime, you name it, I can get you where you need to go. Well, that's a great uh, closing point, Roger. It's been great to be back. I missed you. I truly did. Yes. We, I'm glad I did. <laughs> Yeah, I and you're don't honored get to, to be say in the hello, same hello, room. hello to anyone else. Right, and you just told the same audience you were honored to be in the same room on a day when we're not. So that's good, Bob. Thank you, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, folks, we should probably wrap it up. All and, right. And, and Roger, you know what's really interesting? I think we've got more attention now for this than we have had all day. Yeah, we're having fun. That's okay. That's Everybody good. out That's there, good. have a great day and call us if you need us and just do what you can. Thanks, guys. Be Take healthy. Care.